Here we're gonna derive a nice infinite product identity involving Fibonacci numbers. So we're gonna look at the product as n goes from one to infinity of one minus negative one to the n over the n plus first Fibonacci number squared. And we're gonna use these two tools which we will prove to keep this video self-contained. The first one is so-called Cassini's identity and that says f sub m minus two times f sub m plus one minus f sub m squared is equal to minus one to the m. And the second one is the limit of the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers is equal to the golden ratio. In other words, the limit is m goes to infinity of f sub m plus one divided by f sub m is phi, but that's equal to one plus the square root of five over two. Okay, so let's get to proving this first identity. So we're gonna use the following fact, which we'll also prove, and that is if we take the matrix made up of Fibonacci numbers of this form, so on the diagonal, we have the m pulse first and the m minus first, and on the off diagonal, we have the nth Fibonacci numbers. So that's the same thing as the matrix one, 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 zero to the m power. So let's go ahead and look at the base case for our induction. And for our base case, we'll take the m equals one case. And notice that the left-hand side will be f sub two, and then f sub one, f sub one, f sub zero, where we take the zeroth Fibonacci number to be zero. So notice that is exactly equal to one, 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 zero to the first power, which is exactly what we want it to be. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make an induction hypothesis. So let's say, suppose this is true for m equals k. So in other words, we know that this statement is true for m equals k. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have f sub k plus one, f sub k, f sub k, f sub k minus one equals one, 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 zero to the k. And now what I'll do is I'll take this equation and I'll write multiply both sides by the same matrix. So I'll multiply by the matrix one, 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 zero, and then over here, one, 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 zero. So let's see what we get. So for this upper entry of the left-hand matrix, we have F sub K plus one plus F sub K, but by the recursion, that's F sub K plus two. And then this entry right here will give us F sub K plus one, again, just by matrix multiplication. This entry right here gives us F sub K plus F sub K minus one, but that's also F sub K plus one, again, by the recursion. And then finally, this entry right here is F sub K, again, by matrix multiplication. But now on the right-hand side of the equation, we have K plus one of those matrices. In other words, we have one, 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 zero to the K plus one. But that's exactly what we needed to show in order to finish this proof by induction. So in other words, this equation up here is true. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and clean up the board from here down and we will use this representation in order to prove Cassini's identity. Okay, we just got done proving by induction that this matrix of Fibonacci numbers is the nth power of our matrix one, 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 zero. So now what we'll do is take the determinant of both sides of this equation. So we know the determinant of this side of the equation will be f sub m plus two times f sub m minus one minus f sub m squared. So like I said, that's the determinant of this matrix made up of Fibonacci numbers. But that matrix of Fibonacci numbers is the same thing as the mth power of this right-hand side matrix. So one, 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 zero to the m but now the determinant is a multiplicative function. So that's the same thing as the determinant of the matrix one, 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 zero, all raised to the M power. But now we see that the determinant of this matrix one, 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 zero is equal to negative one. So we end up with negative one to the M. And now if we look at the extreme left and right hand side of the equation, we have derived this formula. Now we're gonna prove that the limit of the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers is phi. And we first need to prove that this limit exists. We're gonna use the Leibniz test to prove this limit exists. And that says the limit of a sequence a n exists if and only if the limit is n goes to infinity of the nth term minus the n minus first term is equal to zero. Okay, so now let's go ahead and apply that to this sequence. So let's look at the limit 
as n goes to infinity of f sub m plus 1 over f sub m minus f sub m over f sub m minus 1. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is mash those together, and I'll do that by kind of finding a common denominator, and that common denominator will be the product of fm and fm minus 1. So that's going to give me the limit as m goes to infinity of fm minus 1 times fm plus 1 minus fm squared. So that's what I give, get by building the denominators in each of these terms. And then I have fm times fm minus 1. But now let's look at that numerator. And notice that numerator is exactly the left-hand side of this Cassini's identity. So we can replace this numerator with minus 1 to the m. And that leaves us with the limit as m goes to infinity of minus 1 to the m over fm times fm minus 1. Now the next thing to notice, which isn't too hard to see, is that the Fibonacci numbers grow without bound. In other words, the denominator is approaching infinity, but the numerator is just alternating between 1 and negative 1. So that means this limit is 0. So in other words, our limit does exist. Now we just have to find the value of that limit. So let's go ahead and set L equal to the limit as M goes to infinity of Fm plus 1 over Fm. Again, we had to know that the limit existed before we started setting it equal to something. And now the next thing that we want to do is use our recursion. So notice that this is the limit as m goes to infinity of fm plus fm minus 1 over fm. Now we can go ahead and split this into pieces. So that's equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of 1 plus fm minus 1 over fm. Great. But you can check that this limit will not be zero and you can do that pretty easily by noticing that this number is always bigger than one in other words this ratio is always bigger than one which means the limit cannot be zero which means we can reasonably talk about the limit of the reciprocal which is exactly what we have right here so notice that this is essentially the reciprocal of this starting term which means the limit is also going to be the reciprocal so we have this is one plus 1 over L. So let's look at the extreme left and right hand side of the equation. And notice we've got something that we can solve for L. So I'll multiply both sides of that equation by L and that gives us L squared equals L plus 1. In other words it gives us L squared minus L minus 1 equals 0. So you can use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. You'll get one positive answer and one negative answer. You know that every term from the sequence is bigger than 1, so you only keep the positive solution. But what you'll see is that the positive solution is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. In other words, the golden ratio. And that finishes the proof of this. And now we're ready for our main goal, which is to evaluate this infinite product. So we've got the product as n goes from 1 to infinity of the quantity 1 minus negative 1 to the n over fn plus 1 squared. And so an infinite product can be seen as the limit of the partial products. In other words, this is the limit as capital N goes to infinity of this partial product N equals 1 to capital N of 1 minus negative 1 to the N over F sub N plus 1 squared. Now what we want to do is mash these two things together again by finding a common denominator. We will rewrite 1 as fn plus 1 squared over fn plus 1 squared. So that's going to give us this limit as capital N goes to infinity. Now we have the product as little n goes from 1 to capital N. And now we can rewrite the inside of this as fn plus 1 squared minus negative 1 to the n and all of that is over fn plus 1 squared. Great. But notice this looks a lot like Cassini's identity over here, where m is replaced with n plus 1. So just to be really careful, let's go ahead and take this identity. So if we set m equal to n plus 1 over here, 
we'll get f sub n times f sub n plus 2 minus f sub n plus 1 squared equals minus 1 to the n plus 1. Now let's go ahead and solve for a term that looks like this numerator. And that will give us f sub n times f sub n plus 2 equals f sub n plus 1 squared plus minus 1 to the n plus 1. Now that's not exactly the same, but we can make it exactly this term if we factor a minus one out of that minus one to the n plus one. And that's gonna leave us with f sub n plus one squared minus negative one to the n. Great, and now notice that this thing that I'm underlining in blue is exactly the same as this thing that I'm overlining in blue inside of our goal. So that means I can replace the numerator of our goal with this term right here, which is f sub n times f sub n plus two. So let's go ahead and do that. We can write this as the limit as capital N goes to infinity. We have the product as little n goes from one to capital N. And then we have f sub n times f sub n plus two in the numerator, and then f sub n plus one squared in the denominator. Now let's go ahead and write out a bunch of terms from this partial product and see what we get. So this is gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity. Now that little n equals one term will give us f sub one, f sub three in the numerator. And then we have f sub two times f sub two, in other words, f sub two in the denominator. So like I said, that's the little n equals one term. So let's see what we get for the little n equals two term. So that's gonna be f sub two times f sub four over f sub three times f sub three, good. And now let's look at the little n equals three term. We have f sub three times f sub five over f sub four times f sub four. And now I think we can see what's going on. So let's maybe do one more, the n equals four term. So we have f sub four times f sub six over f sub five times f sub five. And now let's go all the way up to Let's do the little n equals capital N minus one term. And then we'll do the little n equals capital N term for the last one. So notice that's gonna be f sub n minus one, f sub n plus one, all over f sub n times f sub n. So that's what we get for the little n equals capital N minus one. And then finally for the little n equals capital N term, we get f sub n, f sub n plus two over f sub n plus one times f sub n plus one. But now notice we've got a telescoping action within this product. So let's notice everything that cancels. So we've got this f sub two cancels this f sub two. Then this f sub three cancels this f sub three. This f sub four cancels this f sub four this f sub three and this f sub three and so on and so forth. So notice everything is canceled up until we get here to the very end. So this f sub n will be canceled by something before. This f sub n minus one will be canceled by something before. This f sub n plus one is canceled with this one. This f sub n is canceled with this one. And so all we're left with is f sub one over f sub two. Both of those are one, so that's just equal to one. And then we have f sub n plus two over f sub n plus one. In other words, this boils down to the limit as n goes to infinity, everything cancels except for f sub capital n plus two over f sub capital n plus one. So now let's go ahead and bring that to the top and we'll summarize and finish it off. Now we're ready to finish it off and summarize. So we had our goal infinite product, which we wrote as the limit of a partial product. We used Cassini's identity to rewrite that as this product of f sub n times f sub n plus two over f sub n plus one squared. Then we noticed that that thing telescoped down to just the limit as capital N goes to infinity of f sub n plus two over f sub n plus one. And now finally, we can apply this limit of the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers to see that this is equal to phi, in other words, the golden ratio, one plus the square root of five over two. So that means our goal infinite product is equal to the golden ratio.
And that finishes this problem, and that's a good place to stop.